Welcome back to tonight's Big Picture Rumble. Still with me, Scott Greer, Sam Sachs, and Kevin Martin. Let's get back to it. Donald Trump has a new supporter, former Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan and 1988 presidential candidate David Duke. He endorsed Trump on his show over, the week, uh, over a week ago, calling him the best of the lot of Republican candidates. Seriously, take a listen. I want to mention again about the Trump uh, immigration plan. I mean, it's just really amazing what's going on. And, uh, and I, you know, I, I kind of, my own view on Trump's evolving. I've said from the beginning that I think his campaign is good in the sense that he's bringing these issues to a discussion, which we have to have in America. And he's continuing to move the envelope further. And I think he understands the real sentiment of America. Like I say, I don't know whether it's intentional or sincere or whether it's simply a means, because this is his only path to the possible nomination of the Republican Party and his only path possibly to the presidency. So although we can't trust him to do what he says, you know, the other, the other Republican candidates won't even say what he says. So he's certainly the best a lot. Trump's leading in the Republican polls, too. Not, it's not just David Duke who apparently thinks he's the best of the lot. It seems like a good time to remember the words of former Republican strategist Lee Atwater describing how the Republicans won the South back in the Reagan era. You start out in 1954 by saying that you By 1968, you can't say that hurts your backfire, so you say stuff like uh, forced busing, states' rights, and all that stuff. And you're getting so abstract now, you're talking about cutting taxes and all of these things you're talking about are totally economic things, and the byproduct of them is blacks get hurt worse than whites. We want to cut this, and we want as much more abstract than, than even the busing thing, uh, and a hell of a lot more abstract than the Is immigration just coded racism, like forced busing, but for Mexicans or for people from the South? Is that why Republicans are flocking behind Trump? Yeah, it, it is, and it's extremely scary. I mean, Trump's plan to forcibly round up and deport 11, 12 million people would be an effort that would be 94 times greater than what the U.S. did during World War II, rounding up Japanese Americans and interning them in camps. 94 times greater than that. The amount of state violence and force that would be required to round up 12 million people and deport them would make that effort uh, Historically, one of the uh, one of the greatest atrocities that's been committed, if if that was actually carried out. And the fact is, Donald Trump, although he's talking the most about doing that, he's not the only candidate in the Republican field that wants to deport 11 or 12 million people, which is a really dangerous idea. Yeah. Well, the actual measure to do this to get this done. I mean, I can't speak for Donald Trump, but for most people who are worried about this issue. Is enforcement through attrition, where people make the conditions so difficult for illegal immigrants and do hire illegal immigrants, going after the people who knowingly hire these people for cheaper wages than normal American citizens, you go after them and make the conditions so difficult that they leave on their own. So it's not, I th most people aren't for forcible deportation, I can't speak for Donald Trump, but most people on this issue want enforcement through attrition, not mass deportation. Why not and I don't think and I don't think it's a matter of racism. I think these are people who are genuinely concerned about a government who won't enforce its own laws and are and we have corporations knowingly bringing in people for cheaper labor and putting American citizens out of work. So I think I don't hear anybody yelling about H-1B visas where you've got, you know, white Russians and I, and, and Well, I think H-1 I think some Eastern people Eastern Europeans there are there are over. people there are there are people who do con, who do concern that I think H-1B visas are a major problem because they because they do affect people in our country but it affects a different type of people it affects more college graduates but and it's all these all, all these all these problems should be resolved and I think people do care about these issues so if isn't, people, isn't not simple, many people know about it isn't a simple visas. solution if you don't want people here looking for a job to put an employer in jail if they hire somebody who's not a I, I think they should go after employers through fines well, through whatever well, methods okay. well why isn't well, uh, talking about that though because well, well, you know, well, uh, he's hiring he would have he said to go he's to talking jail about the, the rapists and illegals instead of talking about the the, the employers yeah, who you saw that you saw the people in his uh, hotel in, yeah exactly in he Vegas would in his hotel right. in DC well, here isn't that funny that first of all you have to scrape the bottom of the barrel for David Duke. I thought the guy was dead or in Russia. I mean, he's so I, damn I think irrelevant. He's representing a large mm -hmm. chunk of uh, la, la, a large chunk. The but, but, but excuse me, can I finish? Can, 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 I finish can, yeah. I finish, can I finish my point? And you'll find sure, a lot. You can finish your point. And uh, thank you. I'm glad you permit me to do that with your liberal self. Uh, <laughs> and you'll find a lot of African Americans who actually agree with Donald Trump. They want these. They want these these, these illegals deported because they see them as taking their jobs.
They see them as having to compete with these people who've allowed, who allowed, who were allowed to come here by breaking the law, who have children, who then say, oh, I'm an American citizen. The 14th Amendment was, was really put in place for people like me who were descendants of slavery. But because some liberals somewhere said, oh, and some nice judicial activists said, oh, let's cover people who've come in the country illegally. Why don't we give amnesty to bank robbers? Or amnesty was, to, to, to rapists? It was or amnesty to, 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 why don't we, why don't we give Mr. Uh, William, well, Kevin, he's dead. Kevin, you can't give him amnesty. Kevin, for what it's worth, uh, A, I agree with you. I absolutely agree with you. I, you know, I wrote a chapter about this in my book, Rebooting the American Dream, that if we started putting employers in jail, you would not have people staying here beyond like a picking season where there's a permit to come in. And in fact, that's how it was from the founding of this country until mm -hmm. 1986 when Reagan stopped putting employers in jail. And when Reagan stopped enforcing the, the employer mandate, then all hell went. You know, and I mean, we've tried to put the got, employer mandate back got, in place. You, and, and liberals are screaming, good. oh, you're against civil rights, you're, against, oh, no. you're, you're a nativist, oh, you're no. this and you're no, that, no, and you're no, this no, and no. you're that, yeah. and you're a racist and you're a nativist, and, and this land was stolen from people. We get that crap. Yeah. We've heard that crap for the last 20 years. I agree with you that when you, when you expand your labor force without any control or regulation, the people at the bottom and in the United States as a consequence of 400 years of, of genocide and racism, that's largely people of color, are going to be hurt the worst. I absolutely agree with you. And that's why I think and why I've been saying for years and years, and so have a lot of other liberals, put employers in jail. That's, you know, Reagan changed it. He says, you know, you know, the employers are mostly rich white people. We're not going to put them in jail anymore. Dwight Eisenhower used to put them in jail. Well, Tom, and, and, is, and, and, and people... Let's add to that list. Let's add to, let's add to the nice people up in Montgomery County who go out and hire these day laborers. Who pay no taxes? You see them. The hit, county no, hit them with a five hundred dollar fine. The, the, the county provides what? Put them uh, in jail a, for a, a week. A nice area, a day labor gathering area. Put them in jail too. Not I only agree. employers. I anyone agree. Anyone who has legal, anyone who has uses the legal aid. I agree. And then at the same time, let's fix the very, very badly broken immigration system so the people who have family, people who have, uh, you know, people who have, uh, who came over here really, really young and have, you know, no. I mean, there's a lot they of people in this country. Well, they have to let's, leave. let's put together an immigration system. Why do they have to leave? Yes. Because why, why are people who have established themselves here, who, no, who work hard, them, who pay taxes, who are raising a family, who have kids in school, who have kids who've gone and fought in the military for well, us, and you want to go and deport them? That they have you want to spend millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions deporting them? We spend tens of millions on yeah, everything they, else, and that's a waste cost of money. Us hundreds of millions. We, what, but, why not? Okay, what about the people who were here legally? What about the people who came here? Why should these fine. people be allowed to cut in front of the line? The law they're is already fine. on the books. Why Reagan should they? stopped enforcing it, and no president since him has had the courage to put a single rich white employer in prison. And as a result, and since 1986, in 1980, you're old enough to remember 1986. Kevin. I'm old enough. Uh, 1986, you'll remember the meatpacking industry was a $40 an hour job. It was a good union job. You'd have a pension. You'd you know you'd raise a family. The construction industry was good wages. You could raise a family. All of that, you know, Reagan stopped enforcing that, and suddenly people didn't come up well, just for a few months. With a Democrat Congress, of course. I, I do want to say this. No, there were actually a few politicians who wanted to do the do the measures of punishing the employers. Alabama had a law in 2011, HB 56, that would have gone after employers who knowingly hired and abetted illegal immigrants, but it was gutted by the federal government. So we don't even, the, and that was Obama's administration, so we, the federal government won't even allow state legislatures to even take well, care I, of the problem. I have a hard problem, I, I have a hard time believing that, given that it's no, actually It was actually going to go after employers who knowingly law. hired and helped illegal immigrants. Then, and, and it was gutted by federal law. And they were they argued and the judge said, hey, the federal government has the right to do that. The, the yeah. tragic thing here is that Donald Trump really doesn't care that much about immigration. I mean, he's a guy who, as we've talked about, employs undocumented immigrants. He's saying what he needs to do to try and win a GOP primary. And we see this all across Europe, where uh, you know countries are in, in trouble. And in Greece, you see the far right parties that come up. And all they do is they play on f nativist fears that somebody's coming into the country and taking jobs or destroying we, our and culture. We, and, we, and, and now we see Donald Trump carrying that mantle know, here. And we know why the left wants we know why the left wants these ne these illegals in here because Americans have soured on the leftist brand and you need a new infusion of voters. Yeah, that leftist Reagan, he he really did it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the, 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 you the, keep going the other back thing to Reagan, is you, but keep you keep saying, saying no one Reagan else created this situation, Kevin. Reagan yeah. is dead. Been, Reagan, how many well, then, then let the Republican Party fix it. Since? 
Let the Republicans... Why won't the Democrats fix it? Georgia... Why won't Obama fix it? Why didn't Clinton fix it? The Senate, with a majority of Democrats, and passed a comprehensive... Yeah, and some Republicans passed a comprehensive immigration bill that, that would have put that was a fart. That would knows have, it. That would have put. Everybody that would knows have put. That would have put. That would have put. That would have. That would have put employers in jail. Send and it was blocked home. in the House of Representatives by John Boehner. It's Republicans who are refusing to fix this. A effort. path to citizenship. Somebody breaks a law and you give them a path to citizenship. Why don't we just lay money John out the street Boehner so bank robbers don't have to go to the bank? blocking a law that would put employers in jail. John Boehner is blocking that. Republicans are blocking it. Democrats voted for it. You got your parties backwards. And it's, what what in the well, Democrats, Democrats what, prevented they Alabama keep, from doing yeah, it. Yeah, right. They they prevented Alabama too, right? Yeah, that's and the, Arizona a Democratic and Georgia, president I, prevented I, Alabama from enforcing its own law. Thanks. Okay, let's move on to Ferguson. Right. Municipal Judge Donald McCullen uh, has ordered all arrest warrants from before December 31st, 2014 to be thrown out. That order covers more than 10,000 individual warrants mm -hmm. and comes in the wake of this year's Justice Department report that accused the Ferguson Police Department of policing for profit. Our city shouldn't be in such trouble and weren't until Reagan began pushing huge tax cuts on billionaires and so-called free trade that killed city revenue, tax revenues. Isn't it time to repudiate Reaganism? Here we go blaming Ronald yeah. Reagan again. Yeah, yeah and this it's is fairly this, easy. This is happening, in, in, and some Democrats, to be fair, are on board with because you, you have to basically run, and governors, you have to run on cutting property taxes and cutting taxes for rich people to win nowadays because of this sort of neoliberal sphere we're well, living Jerry in. Jerry Brown ran on raising taxes. He won. He yeah, raised you, taxes. We, we and he's got a balanced backlash. budget. Exactly. And you have seen in some of these states where Democrats have pushed back against that kind of orthodoxy and have been successful in this. But look, we used to have ample funding for police budgets. Those have been cut now to pay for tax cuts for rich people. And now police have to prey on their own citizens in order to uh, keep the lights on. And I think, to me, that's a huge example of uh, a big government run amok when you're, when that's, governments are preying on their citizens. Yeah, to, that's anti-conservative stuff. So. We've got 20 seconds left. Yeah, speed traps are a terrible measure. Should, city should never use it. I think this decision is wrong, though, because it's only going to add more costs to the city of Ferguson and all the taxpayers. But Ferguson shouldn't have been yeah. a speed trap in the first place. Well, you know, the federal government gives money to police for the click it ticket, aggressive driving, seatbelt laws. If you write a certain number of tickets, you get a grant from the Department of Transportation. Yeah, all these things are wrong. All, all, all these are we in are, agreement? All, all these things are wrong, but... Who's the president now? Not Ronald Reagan. <laughs> We're in okay. agreement. You're just going to go. We're at the nice big picture rumble after the break.